let's just look at like a piece of footage here. This is just a little project I did where this guy is training you on how to defend yourself against a zombie. And I'm just going to apply magic bullet film to it and um, choose video as my source here. And you can right off the bat see a bunch of interesting things happen here. So let's let's widen out here and look at like this red barn here and then get a bit of the sky in there. So this, I, I'm intentionally choosing a piece of footage here that isn't particularly professional. This was shot, I think, on a Canon 5D or 7D or something like that. And, you know, we're almost overexposing with the sky. And there's a lot of like pretty rich, saturated colors in the red. You're starting to see some of that signature digital quality including like the way his uh, shoulder is overexposing here like we're, we're already kind of starting from a place of you know we've got digital artifacts already in the footage so that, that's a big thing about magic bullet film is that we didn't want to create a system that required you to have shot on an alexa or some kind of perfect professional uh, digital camera we wanted to be able to handle a variety of, of sources without requiring you to necessarily know a ton about how it was shot. Because if, if you're the cinematographer, sure, you know every last detail about what the camera was and what the settings were. But a lot of times in an editorial situation, you're just handed some footage and you're lucky if it still has the slates on it, let alone something like a color chart or even necessarily information about how it was shot. We boiled all that down for Magic Bullet Film to three choices, video, flat, and log. And technically this was shot with the sort of ProLost flat profile. So really this is kind of the result that like one would be encouraged to get out of the process, but because the lighting of this was so harsh, it kind of looks better out of the box if I just pick video, but I could also pick flat and just go here to contrast and, and reduce it. Magic Bullet Film is kind of like a fancier version of Magic Bullet Mojo. The point is here that it's meant to be the last step in your process. It's meant to be whatever in and video out. And the film effect is the same. It's log or whatever in, and it's implicitly video out. That's great for fast, right? <laughs> but if you are working in something like Resolve, or even increasingly Premiere and others, you may have subsequent color management stuff that you are doing, and you want to integrate something like Magic Bullet Film, or even just any of the cool things you can do in Magic Bullet Looks into that pipeline. So in the most recent update to Magic Bullet Looks, we've added exactly that ability. So remember that when we specified what our footage was on the way in, we said it's S-Log3, but this whole time we've been saying, let's go out to sRGB. But I can go out to any of those things that I came in with, and this is what really elevates Magic Bullet looks from a tool for video editors to a tool that any professional colorist can use in any capacity, whether you embrace the whole idea of getting the whole look or whether you just wanna use something cool like our beautiful chromatic aberration or lens distortion or haze flare or diffusion tools. So let's just pick same as input for our output. So now where input is S-Log3 and our output is same as input. And you can see a little preview of it here. You can always click on this little button here to get an sRGB preview of it. But as long as this output tool is selected, you'll get this little window here that's showing you what your output is gonna be.